Tori Cruz. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also follow me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. I really appreciate it. All right, so today we have on the show Susie Castillo. Hi, Susie. Hello, so Tori. Good to see you. It's so good to see you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm so excited for you to share part of your journey and all of your experiences with our listeners. You are so inspiring. Susie is Miss USA 2003. She's an author and a host. So Susie, I'll let you take it from here and explain a little bit about your background and what you're doing now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So like you said, I was Miss USA 2003. Um, I, gosh, I guess from the time I was a kid, I always wanted to work in entertainment and, you know, as a host, as an actor, and I kind of fell into pageantry, um, that way. Like I, the first agent I ever had, um, at 14 years old, I signed with a modeling agency in Boston. And that agent, when I was 17, was the one that persuaded, like he had, he can be sat me down in his office and he convinced me to enter the Miss Massachusetts Teen USA pageant. Um, and the reason for that was because A, he knew how badly I wanted to move to either New York City or to Los Angeles to make this dream come true. But um, I had just the summer before that, um, I had just turned 17 and I, I don't, I don't even know if it still exists, but Teen Magazine, is that still a thing? I don't know if that's a thing. Sorry if it is, whoever writes it. I know. Oh my gosh. I don't know. So when I was like, when I was in like middle school and um, high school, it was like a huge magazine, like for young girls, right? So Teen Magazine. Um, and it was like that and Cosmo, like we loved Cosmo, we loved Teen Magazine. So Teen Magazine every year partnered with Maybelline. Maybelline was like one of their sponsors and they, they did the Teen Magazine and Maybelline great model search. And girls from all over, like the girl that won, first of all, got to be on the cover of Teen Magazine. And I had started modeling and had all this, these modeling photos. So my best friend, Jessica from high school was like, Susie, we should send in your, your photos. And I'm like, no, like, do you know how many girls send in their photos? Like that's a waste of time. I'm just going to keep grinding in Boston, like going to auditions and stuff. And she's like, what do you have to lose? Like, let's just do it. Right. So we hop in the car and we go to like a print shop and we take like laser print copies of my photos so that of my modeling photos and we send them in. I fill out the little application mail this in right like snail mail because there was no email back then and I end up I get a letter saying oh congratulations you've made like the um regional finals right so like they, they had like a regional final then a semi-finals and then a finals finals where they picked like 12 girls from across the country to fly to New York and spend a week in New York City and compete. Like it was like a little mini pageant almost, right? Like I had never competed in a pageant before, so I didn't know what to expect. But I ended up becoming one of the 12 national finalists for that. And then I ended up becoming the first runner up. And that was my first time I ever went to New York City. Like little did I know that, I don't know, what, six years later, <laughs> seven years later, I would be Miss USA, like living like up the street from the hotel where that's amazing. I it was incredible. Yeah. And so when I got back to, um, so I ended up being the first runner up and I was so upset because the girl that won, um, looked just like me. <laughs> she was from Texas and the entire week that we were in New York, everybody was commenting on how we could be sisters. We look alike. She had short curly hair and I had long curly hair. And so I was super bummed out about it. And I got back to Boston and my agent was like, Oh, how did it go to New York? And I was like, eh, you know, I was first runner up. I didn't win. I'm not going to be on the cover. And he was like, Susie, like you were, <laughs> first runner up in this national do you know how many thousands of girls like enter this model search and you got second place that's pretty incredible and I'm like well I didn't win I'm not gonna be on the <laughs> cover so it's not that incredible actually you know and he's like okay you have to enter this pageant because if you can get second place out of these thousands and thousands of girls that enter this competition you could probably win this thing and I was like what are you talking about and he explained the pageant thing and he had had some models um, in the past, like if you represented some models in the past that had won the Miss Massachusetts USA pageant or Miss Massachusetts Teen USA pageant. And, um, and that's how I got into pageantry. Like he, he was my first sponsor. He wrote me a check for a hundred bucks. I remember and wrote me this beautiful letter that I, that he was like, Aww. make sure you make, make lots of copies, go to 
go to the insurance, like your car insurance company, like your dentist, like just go to restaurants in your hometown, like try to raise as much money as you can because it's expensive. And that's what I did. And I won. I, I entered Miss Massachusetts Teen USA, won, went to Miss Teen USA and had no idea what I was doing. Um, it was crazy, but it was a huge learning experience. And, um, and then that summer when I got back from Teen USA, I started college. So I decided to wait to finish, like focus on school, finish school. And I said, okay, when I'm done with school, I'm going to try the Miss uh, again. And I did Miss Massachusetts USA and won. And then I went to Miss USA and won. And two weeks later, uh, MUO um, hooked me up with a great agency out here in LA and the rest is history. Like I've been working as a host, as an actor. I'm currently hosting a show on Facebook Watch, um, which is just Facebook. Facebook Watch is like what Facebook calls their streaming service, but it's really <laughs> just Facebook. Um, but the show is called Cultural Capital, and it's kind of like um, it's kind of like MTV Cribs. If you remember that show, how like people would go and check out like celebrity homes. So I, it's that, but for the tech startup world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the show was created by NASDAQ, so um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like, I'm always in Silicon Valley, you know, in San Francisco or in New York City, um, interviewing incredible CEOs, like 30-year-olds that are worth $300 million, and I'm just like, what am I doing? What did I do wrong? <laughs> like, it's amazing, these, you know, young people that are um, just creating some of the world's most incredible companies. And so that's what we do on cultural capital. I sit down with the CEOs, I get a tour of their office space, which is usually incredible. There was one office that had a slide, like a giant stainless steel slide from their second oh, floor cool. to the first floor. So cool. So it's, it's been a lot of fun to, to host that show. And I'm going to Brazil on Saturday, actually. To, For the show? Yeah, we're shooting three or four episodes in Brazil. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. You do an incredible job. I obviously watch like every single one that you do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you do an amazing job. So how do you become, as I'm interviewing you, how do you become a great interviewer? You know, I think for me, honestly, um, it's, I've, 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 had, I've gotten this question a lot over the years, especially from aspiring hosts, right? Like, how do, you, how do I break into the business? And I'm like, well, I broke into the business in a very unusual, unorthodox way, right? I won the Miss USA pageant. Not everybody has that right? Mm -hmm. um, but people have asked me about hosting uh, coaches or, um, you know, I've actually tried to like, I helped a few friends like in the past um, with their, with their skills. For me, I honestly think it was, um, I have a gift of gab. I mm -hmm. like to talk. <laughs> I used to Amen. get in trouble. I know. I used to get in, I know. I mean, listen, you and I can talk <laughs> forever I feel like I when, we have, when you come out to LA and we have lunch it's like what three hours, hours later I know it's crazy we both have the gift of gab and that could be dangerous uh, <laughs> we, we could be here all day um but I I mean I got in trouble all the time when I was a kid like I if I can tell you I mean I had so many detentions when I was in middle school and <laughs> high school just because I couldn't keep my mouth shut and my mom would my mom was like at a loss she's like Susie another detention like what can we do? Like, why, why can't you just pay attention? And, and it's interesting. Like I found school, I mean, I did, I did okay in school, but I found it really boring. Like I was a very creative person. And like I said, I like to talk to people. I enjoy getting to know people. And so when I interview someone, it's very, it's authentic. I'm not just asking questions because my producer or my director told me, okay, here's a list of questions that we want you to ask the CEO yeah, I, you know, I incorporate those questions as well. But if, if the person I'm interviewing says something that to me is interesting, which oftentimes they do because I'm interested in them, um, I ask follow-up questions, you know, like what, and I, and I treat the conversation um, as if they were a friend. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I think it's, I think people appreciate that. And I think that's what really makes a good um, interviewer is somebody who is genuinely interested in the other human that you're speaking to, you know, and, and another thing that I, you know, I've read a book, I can't remember the name of it, but it's all about be, living in the present and living in the now. Right. And if we think about it, like to me, you are the most important human being right now in this moment, because you are the person that I'm interacting with. You know, I mean, I live in California, God forbid an earthquake happens. And I know this might sound a little morbid to think about or to live this way, but I think, 
gosh, if there's a huge earthquake that happens and I die in 10 minutes, Tori was the last person I had a conversation with. So what kind of conversation did we have? You know, was I, was I flighty? Was I on my phone while she's talking to me? You know what I mean? Like being present is like so important to me. And I, I take that same, what I do with my friends and with family members, with my husband, I take that into an interview as well. And even though they're a stranger, it's the first time I'm meeting them perhaps, but it's like, this is it right here, right? This is all I have right now. This is it. That's such great advice. And so you're also the co-founder of Pageantology with one of your best friends, Shandy Mm -hmm. Finnessy Higgins. So explain to us how it is working with your best friend, with the company, and what you guys do with Pageantology. It's hard. (laughs) It's a lot of it's a lot of work, um, but you know, Shandy and I get along really, really well. We have the up, like we have so much respect for each other mm-hmm. as as women, as friends, um, you know, as entrepreneurs. And when it was actually Shandy's idea, I never had. I mean, you know, my my goal in life was to work in entertainment, right? And um, I never wanted to be a coach. And I I would get asked, you know, moms and girls would ask me if I would coach them for the pageant and for their upcoming pageant. And I'd be like, I don't even know where to begin. You know, like I don't coach. That's not what I do. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to talk, like I'll tell you everything I did to prepare, but, and I I would have conversations with people for free. Like it was Mm -hmm. never a business for me. And um, when Shani and I became friends, she kind of She's like, hey, like we were talking about how we both prepared for Miss USA and then for Miss Universe. And, you know, she had competed in Miss America and didn't place. And I competed in Miss Teen USA and didn't place. And we were both heartbroken from that and came back, worked two or three times harder than we did. And then, you know, took home the the title of Miss USA. And so we, once we became friends and we're chatting about what we did to prepare for Miss USA, we noticed there was a lot of similarities in our prep so shandy was like why don't we like teach a workshop and my husband matt was the one that came up with the name pageantology because he's like it's kind of like a science you guys both like you know you dissected pageantry and he and he was around matt was around when i was competing for um my miss pageants miss massachusetts usa and then miss usa so he saw the work that Mm -hmm. i put into preparing for the pageant and the research that i did you know and it's almost like i I approached it as if I were taking an, an exam, like a college exam. You know, I, I watched tons of tape. Um, it was almost like an athletic event for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's was how like, it was for me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we talked about that. And and that's, you know, that's that's what I did, but Shandy did the same thing. And so we kind of put our, our minds together and came up with a curriculum that we thought um, that incorporated both of our prep, right? Like what helped her and what helped me and um and that's what we bring to our pageantology girls now yes and i'm a pageantology girl it was amazing gosh i had so much fun after we facetimed so many times and i saw you guys in person and then pageant was over i'm like oh no i need to see your face again (laughs) i think i even text you guys even you know after that was over because i it was just we became friends and you you two are both so warm and welcoming to all of your clients and a lot of us girls, even over pageant weekend, we talk about Shandy and Susie because you two are just so genuine and you're ama- amazing at what you do, honestly. Thank and you so much. You know, much. I'm a huge fan and huge supporter of, of both of you, but um, you. What, yeah. what would you suggest to any girls that are going into pageantry? What would you, besides, of course, working with you, because that's what <laughs> I tell girls too, because you are the pros. But besides that, what do you recommend as far as, especially confidence? Yeah. Um, you know, it's really hard. I, I, especially with the, with the confidence part, right. I feel like I've, like, I was always a a confident girl, but I certainly had my insecurities like anyone else, you know? And I, for me, I remember just thinking in my head, like, you gotta fake it till you make it right. Like when I saw a girl, like, okay, Susie, you're not like, you don't love your thighs, but you know what, you gotta be in a swimsuit for this thing. So just do your best. Right. And, and I just remember, there were days where I was at the gym twice a day, you know, I would go to the gym four hours. So two hours and early in the, right after work. And then, um, the night, like in the morning, either morning or after work, or I would go after work and then have dinner and chill and then go back to the gym for like another, do another cardio session or something. 
and that was all like before Miss USA, you know, I just remember thinking somebody's going to win this thing, right? One of us 51 girls, or if you're competing at a state, state level and there's 40 girls, whatever competing, mm -hmm. somebody's going to take home that crown. Why can't that person be you? And in order for it to be you, you do have to show this amazing level of confidence, you know, and the things that I wasn't confident in a hundred percent, that's, those are the things that I was like, okay, fake it till you make it. Like just, <laughs> I had to pretend like I was in love with my thighs, even though I wasn't, you know, <laughs> because that's what would give you, that's what would give me the, the confidence that I knew I needed on stage, right? To like, to just radiate and not, not think about the insecurities, right? So, I mean, I think focusing on, focusing on, on the things that you love about yourself, right? And, and ha having that positive self-talk, like practicing that on a daily basis, like constantly all day long. Um, definitely helps. I mean, Shandy and I always tell our clients, um, have a word when you're on stage in evening gown, when you're on stage in, in swimsuit, if you want to be sexy, if you want to feel sexy, have that word going through your mind as you're walking on stage, sexy, 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 sexy. Like you just, it's just repeating, you know? And, and that really helps with your confidence level on stage as well. Um, but I will say not like nothing beats, nothing will help your confidence level more than preparing for it like you've never prepared for anything in your life if you know it's you really have to leave every stone unturned mm -hmm. um because regret is the worst thing i can tell you after miss teen usa and shani will tell you after miss her experience at miss america when she didn't place and i didn't place at, at miss teen usa um there was a lot of regret for both of us mm -hmm. you know there was stuff that we felt like we could have done um differently that we should have done differently um you know it's that's awful. You want it. You want every decision to be at the end of the day, your decision. And you, you have to do your research. You have to do, you have to be at the gym two days uh, or <laughs> twice a day. If need be, if that's, what's going to help your confidence level, that's what you need to do. Cause you, I mean, the other thing is like for a lot of these pageants, you only get one shot, right? Like right. you can't be at the state level. If you don't win, you can go back. But at Miss USA, you can't go back. You just have that one, one time. Exactly. And I think it's all in timing too. And if it's your time, it's your time. If it's not, you're not, it's not your time, but right. at but the if same not, time, but if it's not your time, if you worked really hard for it, then you have no regrets. Exactly. You don't have to live with regret. And mm -hmm. that, that's why that's so important. Lay it all out on the table and whatever right. happens. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. And you can still cry and, and be upset. <laughs> that you, it didn't go your way because it's a huge thing. You know, I've had plenty of those things that didn't happen with Miss, Miss USA, but it's happened afterwards with tons of things out here in, in LA jobs that I was up for that I was this close to getting. I mean, last year I was so close. Oh I my gosh. Like, I know what one you're talking about. It was, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. So I think you were in LA with your mom, weren't you? I was. Oh my God. And I didn't get that job. And it's like, I didn't get it. And I emailed the producer and I, you know, it's like, I, I fought for that. And he had me come back in again. I auditioned again for this amazing role. And I still, it still didn't go my way. It was between me and another girl and another girl got it. So, you know, it just, those things happen, but I don't have any regret. You know, I, it was the first time for the first time in my life where I felt like I was so right for something so much so that I found the executive producer's email and I emailed him myself, which is something that I'd never done before. And I knew that I was like, I mean, I started the email by being like, I'm so sorry. I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. But he was like, you know what? Yeah, come back. Like, we'd love to see you again. And he had me come back. And that's something that would not have happened if I wasn't bold. So you have to make decisions like that. You have to be bold. You have to work really hard. And um, even if it doesn't go your way, you don't have any regrets. You know, I don't have any regrets about the way I handled that situation, even though it didn't go my way. Exactly. I always say every no is just one step closer to your yes, but yeah. it doesn't mean that you can't be disappointed that you didn't get that. How do, what do you recommend to people who are going through that challenging time and they know that, you know what, they did everything they can, but how can they get back up and do better the next time? Yeah. Um, that's such a great question. Cause it's something that I feel like, um, 
for the most part, I've become somewhat of an expert on because it snows constantly out here. You know, I mean, every audition that you go to, if you don't get the job, that's a no, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes I audition for things and right in the room, I know that they're not interested when one bit in me, even though yeah. I just paid my acting coach, you know, 120 bucks for, for him to help me coach, you know, to coach for the, or whatever. And, uh, you know, and stuck in LA traffic for an hour, all this, all this stuff, right? And you work so hard for something and it's like two minutes in the room and you're like, oh, okay, well, thank you. Bye. And you leave. <laughs> um, you know, you kind of have to, you can't take it personally, right? Like at the end of the day, sometimes I will go back and watch, if it's an acting job, for example, I'll go and I'll watch that episode of, you know, that guest star role that I auditioned for on whatever, Grey's Anatomy, you know, let's say, you know? I'll find the episode, I'll watch it, and they hired an Asian girl, or they hired somebody that looked like you, you know, it's yeah. like, I can't compete with that, it's just different, it's apples and oranges, so it doesn't mean that I did a bad job, it's just at the end of the day, the producers went with a different look, you know, and so you can't take things personally, you know, when, when you have interviews, or um, at a pageant, the judges don't know you personally, they interview interview you for what two three minutes right right and then they see you on stage a couple times and that's it like <laughs> if you don't win like you just can't take it personally it's not that they didn't like who you were as a human you know you're it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean that you're a bad human any of those things um and you kind of just have to stay focused on the big picture right have that big picture goal in your mind so when these other little and you take steps right to get there it's like you just keep chipping away and along the way um, you know, certain doors are going to close in your face and then, okay, time to go to the next house and knock on their door. You know, you just have to keep chipping away, knowing that keeping your, your ultimate goal in mind, um, at the forefront of, of your mind. I really admire you for your authenticity and just how you always keep such a level head on even comparison. Comparison is something that I'm sure you've had to deal with your whole life with, pageantry and then of course now with in the entertainment industry so how do you always stay so authentic to yourself and yeah. not give yourself to others um i love the quote comparison is a thief of joy who said mm -hmm. that i think it was theodore resgood that said that because it's so true the second you start comparing yourself to other people um and i did it early on like i i didn't do it in I didn't do it when I went to Miss USA only because I knew that all of us were unique, right? And again, I had watched so many um, tapes of past Miss USA pageants, past Miss Universe pageants. And I'm like, dang, how do you choose like, you know, the girl, how did they choose this, you know, the girl that won and she's black and the first runner up was white, you know, and then the third runner up was Miss Japan. Like, <laughs> so, like it's different, right? And you're not competing against the other girls. You're competing against yourself and how well you show up that day, right? Mm -hmm. um, in that moment, um, you know, and I, t and, and, and Shandy and I, you know, talk about this too. We laugh because it's like, Shandy's tall, skinny, blonde, blue eyed. Her first runner up was shorter, brunette, more um, curvy, voluptuous girl, like mm -hmm. apples and oranges. My, you know, I, when I won, I was Miss Massachusetts USA with my curly hair, Latin girl, you know, from Massachusetts. And my first run up was this sweet girl, Michelle Arnett from Alabama, blue eyes, blonde hair. She looked like it. You look, you look actually resemble her. <laughs> and, you know, it's apples and oranges. You know, we're not, we weren't competing against each other. Mm -hmm. She was just as qualified to become Miss USA as I was. It just went my way that night you know, and um, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad it did, but, and I would always say if anyone, anybody that I admired, I remember at Miss USA that I was like, oh, she's gorgeous. Like, oh my gosh, look at her. She's got legs for days. Like, I love her. I'd be like, I want her to be my first runner up. Like, I want her to be my second runner up, <laughs> you know? Like, I would never think to, I would never put myself down. You know, there's a way, especially as women, that we can compliment each other without being like oh but like oh look at her legs are so long but and mine are like oh I'm, you know I, I don't like my thighs still you know it's okay but there's other qualities about me that she doesn't have you know mm -hmm. and so we're just we're all different and we shouldn't be um comparing ourselves to other to other women like that you know again I think that's focusing on the wrong thing 
Um, I think you, you, if you find somebody that you admire or that you like, and you're just like, oh, maybe a little envious of, like, turn that envy into compliments to them, right? And, yes. and be like, oh my gosh, your legs are amazing. Like, what do you, you know, what workout do you do, <laughs> you know? And become friends with that person. There's, there's no need to just be like, eh, and, you know, kind of turn a, your shoulder to somebody and give them the cold shoulder. Exactly. There's yeah. enough to go around to everybody. There is. Yeah. And you never know what, what's for you. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes what we have in our minds, um, you know, they, my mother-in-law says to me, she's like, you know, we, we make plans and God laughs because he has his own plans for us. And it's true, right? Sometimes doors close for a reason because maybe there's something bigger and better for you. And if you had gotten that thing that you so badly wanted or thought you wanted, that would de detract you from what you were supposed to be doing, which is better than that anyway. So we kind of have to trust. Yeah, trusting God, trusting the universe. Yes, Yeah. Believe. Yeah. yeah, and it's so hard sometimes, you know, I, we all go through dark, trying mm -hmm. times, and, um, you know, it's, it's in those, those times where we're tested uh, are the times where we have to be even stronger, um, but, you know, give yourself the grace, too, to cry it out and be frustrated and be angry and then get back to work. Absolutely. We were just talking about that off camera, how it's okay yeah. to cry. It's okay to be down. I cry all the time. Me too. All the time. I'm so <laughs> emotional. <laughs> my husband, I'll, I'll cry about something and my husband will think something really bad is wrong. And I'm like, or if he walks in the door and I'm crying, I'm like, everything's fine. I'm just having a moment. Like just, the pen just dropped, honey. That's all. <laughs> yeah. But I'm one of those people that like cries if I'm, I cry when I'm angry. I would cry when I'm really happy, like super happy. You know, I cry when I'm sad. It's like crying is like my cue. Like it's, mm -hmm the go-to emotion for me for some reason and I can't control it like I just can't control it so I've learned over the years to just embrace it because mm -hmm. I used to think that crying was like a, a form of um was like a weakness mm -hmm. of sorts right to show that emotion and then I'm like you know what everybody cries like some people can hold back their tears really well and I just can't not me I can't I try, I've tried I can't I can't do it mm -hmm. so it just happens and I've learned to embrace it so speaking of Matt, you touched on, you know, you of course have a husband and he's been amazing and so supportive and he's actually also in the entertainment industry. So yeah. just give us a little bit, if there's anyone listening that's either, you know, has a boyfriend or even a girlfriend and just in a relationship of any sort, what advice do you recommend as far as having just an overall healthy relationship? Mm, my gosh, an overall healthy relationship. Loaded I'm question. <laughs> I know there's so many layers to that, but I have always said that I think the most important aspect of any relationship is communication. Um, once Matt and I really learned how to communicate well with each other um, and how to talk to each other the way we needed to be talked to each other, you know, like, because what you need from that kind of a relate from a relationship is different, right? So um, once we talked about that um, and learned truly how to be good communicators with each other, our relationship got even better. Um, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, we've, we just celebrated our 13th wedding anniversary. We've been together for 20 years, 20 years, which is like half my life. Cause I just turned 40. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, like soon I will in another year, I'll be with him more <laughs> than I haven't been with him in my life. Wow. Um, which is pretty crazy to, to say. Um, and, and if I told you what the beginning of our relationship was like, you'd be like, wow, how did you guys survive that? Like, how did you, how are you still together? Much less, you know, you've been married for 13 years. Um, we just had to learn how to communicate. You know, when you're young, you're stubborn, you're stupid, you're, you know, you're stubborn. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and, and stupid. And we were both stubborn and stupid. And we had to like, but we knew it was like this, the love that we had for each other was insane, you know, and um, we were like, okay, like, let's work through this. Like, let's figure it out. Cause we don't, we didn't want to break up. Like mm -hmm. we would have conversations speaking of crying where we'd both be like, ah, like we don't get along. Like we should just break up. And, you know, but neither one of us wanted to break up. Mm -hmm. So we just were like, okay, if we're not going to, if that's not an option, breaking up is an option, but also living in misery is not an option. <laughs> We need to work, work it out. Like, let's figure this out. And we did. And we read books and 
all sorts of stuff and, and we worked it out but we realized that communicate like talking effectively like with because you know yelling at each other is not communicating you know putting people putting each other down that's not communicating mm -hmm. it's like sitting down with respect and coming from a place of love and talking about what you need how are you going to give that to me and what do you need and what can I do you know and another thing that we really noticed is that he can't make me happy and I can't make him happy we have to be happy on our own so what I what we tell you what we told each other is you know because we can't be we can't we're not mind readers right and a lot of times I feel like that's like a a relationship um flaw that so many people have you know yeah. where they're like well he should know you know we've been together for five years he should know that I don't like that or he should it's my birthday he should have known to send me flowers it's like well no if flowers if that's something that you really love and it's important to you then you should communicate that to him and he probably would get you flowers next time you know and so it's it's things like that like we're not and and Matt and I fell into that trap as well where it's like well you should know you should have done this and you should have no there's no should have mm -hmm. like you just ask if you want something done if you want whatever it is that you need from your partner in life ask for it and communicate with them um and once you once we started communicating all of those things just like just fell away that's great. You guys are like totally relationship goals. I think I post that <laughs> underneath your anniversary post on Instagram because you two both inspire me so much. Oh, thank you. You two are so supportive of each other and it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I think I see fine. him behind there in the window. So, hey, Matt, if you can hear. <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about you. <laughs> I know. I'm doing an interview. You're on. Hey, hey you're on candy camera now. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> um, there's Matt. There's Matt. Everyone get Matt. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Susie, yeah. what are some of your like daily habits that you would say have led you to success, whether that be your career or relationship, just everyday life? <gasps> daily habits. Oh my gosh. Okay. So one thing that um, I've been doing since I was a kid was write down my goals. Um, and then as I've gotten older, like just to see them every day and to be reminded of, of them. And um, as a kid, what I would do is every day I would say to myself, okay, like before I would go to school, I would read my goals and I'd say to myself, okay, I'm going to do one thing today, at least one thing that's going to help me get one step closer to reaching one of those goals mm -hmm. on, the, on my little post-it that I would keep on my wall. And now I'm still a big post-it person. Like I put post-its up every, everywhere. <laughs> like I try to not like put them on like outside, but like when you open up a closet door, there might be a post-it in there, you know, that will say something positive. Um, whether it's, you know, we're blessed and it's like, this is why we're blessed, you know, it's something like that. Um, I think that rem reminding yourself of things like that um, is really important to just to keep you on track. And, you know, sometimes we can fall into this trap of, uh, of just self pity sometimes, and you need, um, you need reminders, you know, we're not, none of us are perfect. And uh, even as perfect as, as somebody may seem, um, believe me, they have their, their, moments in life and and their hardships and stuff and we all need reminders of you know to be grateful you know we all need to be reminded of the things that should make us uh, feel whole and complete in life you know because right. we forget we forget when that pity <laughs> kind of starts to take over it's so true words of affirmation are huge i have colorful sticky notes all over my place <laughs> so i'm that. right there with you that's what i'm talking about little yeah yeah and i leave whenever i travel um i leave little notes for matt too like i'll leave uh, yeah like in his shoe like sneakers that i know he wears all the time or, or at the door before i leave i'll put a last little post-it note Aww. with a little note or something yeah <laughs> fun so I cute post-its post-its <laughs> not an ad but could be an ad <laughs> i know <laughs> well Susie, it's been so amazing talking to you and just any lasting pieces of advice, of advice that you would have for anybody watching? Just to work hard, you know, um, 
I can't, I can't even tell you how, how often I don't, I, I'm a hard worker, but I don't always work hard at everything. Mm -hmm. And and when I don't work hard at something and I don't get it, it doesn't go my way. I think to myself, I didn't deserve it. I didn't work hard for that. You know, I didn't work hard for that audition and I thought I was going to get it. Like shame on me, you know? So if you really want something just to work hard, like don't, I know it sounds so simple, but at the end of the day, that all the other things you have to do to be successful in life um, will come from hard work, you know, because having that great work ethic is what's going to push you to do tons of research. It's what's going to push you to read more books, to be more knowledgeable about whatever it is that you're getting into. Um, it's what's going to get you if it's gym, if it's the, you know, you got to lose some weight and you want to get healthier. It's what's going to get you into the gym, you know, working hard, that having a, a good work ethic is I think really important. So that and, and be moldable too, right? Cause That's when, at, yeah, as you're, as you're um, moving along on your journey, when you hear those no's, when you get those doors slammed in your face, when you continue to fail, I hate the word fail because it's not a failure, but, there's always a lesson that you can learn from those failures. Um, so as you, as you go along in life, when things aren't going a certain way, and sometimes God or the universe is nudging us, that's all it is. They're nudging us to go into a different, on a different path. Um, so be open to that. Don't be rigid and closed off um, with the blessings that are around us, you know, this energy, these blessings are everywhere. And as you're, as you're moving along, when those doors slam in your face and you hear all those no's, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be successful. It just means that the path is going to be slightly different than what you thought it was going to look like. And that's okay. Yes. Gosh, you're such a beautiful light. I always love talking to you. Thank you, my dear. I love talking to you. I can't wait. I wish we were in person and I can hug you. <laughs> I know. We're so close. We're so close. We're so far. So close yet so far. I know. I know. Well, it was soon. such a pleasure. It was so nice. I'm so happy that you started this show. Um, you're amazing. And it's just, this is great. This is such a great platform for you, I think. Thank you. And I'm sure all of our listeners just absolutely are so inspired by your story and your journey. You're like I said, you're such a beautiful light in this world and just keep spreading your beautiful smile and everything that you're doing because the world needs a lot more Susie's around here. Oh, thanks, Miss Tori. Likewise, likewise. <laughs> and Susie, how can they contact you? So you do coaching. If you yeah. somebody wants to hire you for even hosting, they found you on a show. How sure. how can anybody find you or contact you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll give you the, my pageantology email. It's just Susie, S-U-S-I-E, at pageantology.com. Um, I'm always on Instagram like everyone else. I'm just at Susie Castillo um, on Instagram. Come follow me. You can DM me if you have any questions. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that episode just as much as I did. Please put your comments below, click subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, follow me on social media at Miss Tori Cruz. Until next time. Be unstoppable.